Another aspect of the true Space Invaders game that we don't have yet is that there are usually bunkers, one here, one here, and one here, that the ship can hide behind when shooting at and getting shot by the aliens. And so we're going to add that here. Now, we're going to do this in a bit of a different way. We are going to actually use little pieces and build bunkers out of those little pieces, and you'll see why when we're done. So if I go to Actor, and I right-click, make a new subclass, you'll see that I have an image here called Bunker Piece. And I did this by adding that image into the Images folder of my Greenfoot project. And all it is is a very, very small picture. I think it's 5 pixels by 5 pixels. And I'm going to make a class called Bunker Piece. It doesn't actually have to match that, but that's what it is, so I'll call it Bunker Piece. And if I put it on the screen, that's what it looks like. It's just a very small little dot. And we're going to use this to build a bunker. So I'll reset, and I'm going to go into level 1, because that's where we get the world set up. And here's where we're going to do a little bit more with for loops. Now before I do that, let's just get one of these bunker pieces on the screen. So I'm going to put a line right here that says add object. And here, instead of the hero life count, I'm going to put a new bunker piece. And I want it to be here. So right there, it's about, I don't know, maybe 100 by 300. But I'm going to show you a trick right now. I can drag the hero to this part of the screen, say right here, right click, inspect and I can see the X and the Y coordinate. So, a little trick there. So about 110 and 290. Close that, reset, goes right back to where it was. So I'm going to put a new bunker piece at 110 and 290. And if I run it now, you can see, look, there's a bunker piece right there. Now obviously that's not the bunker that I'm looking for. Might be a little too high up, but anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to put a whole bunch of those pieces together to build a bunker. Think of it like putting bricks together to build a wall. The way I'm going to do that, and I could, again, I could copy this and paste a couple times, and maybe I alter this to 115, and I alter this to 120, and now I'm starting to build my bunker but copying and pasting is not a very efficient way to go. Remember we learned about a for loop. A for loop will do something over and over and over again. And that's what I'm going to use here. So I'm going to copy the start of this for loop, and I'm going to delete these other two add objects. And now I have a for loop that's going to do something eight times. Now I don't know exactly how many pieces I'm going to want in my bunker. Let's try 12. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at 110, and every time I'm, I'm adding a new piece, what I want to do is add 5 times x. And if you're wondering where this is coming from, remember, x is a variable, and it goes up by 1 every time we go through the loop. So this is going to happen 12 times. The first time it happens, the value of x is 0. The next time, the value of x is 1. The next time, the value of x is 2. And it will go, keep going and going and going. And the very last time it happens, the value of x is going to be 11. Not 12, because by the time we get to 12, we've gone too far. If we included this, then it would include 12. But if we do that, it's going to go from 0 all the way up to 11. So this line's going to happen 12 times. And when x is 0, this expression is going to evaluate to 110. Because 110 plus 5 times 0 is 110. When x goes to 1 the next time, 110 plus 5 times 1, well, that's 115. So it's going to go up by 5 each time. So if I click here, we should see 12 bunker pieces in a row. There we go. So that's the start of a bunker. 
If I want it to be a little bit longer, wider, whatever you want to say, then instead of putting in 12 pieces, let's put in 15. And it gets a little longer. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here, and I want to do another one. So, I could take this line, copy, paste, and then change the Y coordinate by 5. And if I do that, you can see that I just got another line. I go back here, and I could do it again, change the Y coordinate by 5, and I have another bunker, or sorry, another line, and my bunker is starting to look like something I could actually hide behind. So it's actually working. That's great. However, there is a smarter way to do it. So I'm going to go back into level one. And what I'm going to show you now is something called a double for loop or a nested for loop. If you'll notice, what we're doing is we're actually doing a for loop over and over again. So here is the smarter way to do it. Inside the first for loop, sorry, outside the first for loop, I want to do this over and over and over again, but I want to increase this number by five every time. So watch what I'm going to do. For int z equals zero, z less than and how many rows do we want in there? Let's do five rows. Z plus plus. Enter, open a bracket, and here I close a bracket, and I tab this over, get rid of all this stuff. What I've just done is I have put a loop inside of a loop, which is complicated, no doubt. The first time you see it, it's like, what is going on? But basically what I'm going to do, we know that this will make a line of bunker pieces. And I want to do that five different times. And each time I do it, I want this value, the Y coordinate, to go up by five. So the first time that I do this, the z value will be 0. The next time I do this, make a line, the z value will be 1, which means that this will evaluate to 295. And then after, it will be 300, and so on. Let's see what it looks like. Look at that. So with just that little bit of code, what I have is a functional bunker that I can hide behind. And I can stylize it a little bit later, but for now, it's a pretty good bunker. If I go back to level one, I may notice that this number here is really how far I go over to build the bunker. And this number here is how far down I go to build the bunker. So good programming practice, I can go in here, and at the top, Maybe I put int um, bunk y equals, and maybe I want to go a little bit lower than 290, so let's go like 310. And I can put bunk y right there, because it's the y coordinate of the bunker. And then here I could do another one that says int bunk x. 1 equals 110. And if you're wondering why I'm doing x1, well, remember, I'm going to need three bunkers, and the x coordinate is going to be different for each one. And here I'm going to put bunk x1. There we go. Move down a little bit, same size. So this looks pretty good. Now, I've got a bunker made, and I'll put a little comment here saying makes the bunker, and I can even go inside and put this makes one row, and really I can put a little additional comment mix over this makes 
um, multiple rows. So we have five rows. And again, I might as well keep going with my good programming structure here. Instead of five right here, I'm going to put um, num bunker rows. And I'm going to put that there. And here, this is really the number of bunker columns or the width of the bunker. So maybe I'll call that bunker width, int bunker width. Put that there. So the bunker width is 15. The number of rows in the bunker is five. Nothing changes, but it's better documentation. So great, we have a bunker. Now if I go over here, you'll see the bunker isn't functional, yet, but that's not too hard to fix. So I'm going to go into my bullet class, and I've already told the bullet how to hit an alien. What I want to do now, I want to make my game so that when I go over here and shoot, a bunker piece will get hit and go away. So I go into my bullet class, and I already know how to check to see if I hit an alien. So right here, I'm going to copy, and I'm going to paste. And where it says alien, I'm going to change that to bunker piece. And I'm going to put that wherever it says bunker or alien. So I, I'm, I'm not deleting this line. I'm still checking to see if the bullet hit an alien. But I also want to see if it hit a bunker piece. And if it did, I'm, I'm going to store that as BP for bunker piece. So I'm not going to change this. If the bullet hits an alien, we want to do all this stuff. But else if BP winds up not being null, so this means if we hit a bunker piece, well, what do we want to do? Well, we want to get rid of the bunker piece. So I'm going to copy that line, put it here, and I'm going to get rid of BP, the bunker piece that I hit, and I'm going to get rid of the bullet. So just by adding that little bit of code, And now perfect, I've got a bunker that I can hide behind and shoot. Now the aliens can still shoot through it because I haven't coded the enemy bullet yet. So let's quickly do that. And so I go to the enemy bullet. And very similar to what I just did. In fact, I can copy and paste. I'm going to take this code, copy, paste it here. So the enemy bullet is going to say, did I hit the hero? Did I hit a bunker piece? And then I'm going to copy this, copy, and I'm going to paste it right here. And if BP is not null, remove BP and remove the enemy bullet. So it's pretty much the exact same code. And now we're going to have to wait for him to come back over, but I know it works there. So let's see if it works with the enemy. And what I'll have is a bunker that I can hide behind for a while until it gets obliterated and I'll have to move. See? There we go. So we have a bunker that's functional, but it's going to last me so long before I'll have to move, and eventually those aliens are going to get me. Okay? So there you go. We have a functional bunker. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this code here, and I'm going to make not one but three bunkers. And to do that, I'm going to have to replicate this, and I'll change bunk x, y. I'll have to make a bunk x2 and an x3. So next time you see the video, you'll see three bunkers, and all, 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 I, all I will have done will have made three of these instead of just one. Okay?